Tony Nichols joins us now from Melbourne Airport. And Tony, good morning. Both Melbourne and Sydney airports are believed to be the ones that will be most seriously affected by this national strike. What's the situation there right now? Well, good morning, Virginia. Yes, I can confirm that members of the Transport Workers Union arrived here at the Melbourne Airport at 4.30am ready and willing to work up to their strike time of 7am only to be greeted in the car park by Qantas management to be told that they're not welcomed on premises. So the union are calling this a preemptive strike against their own workers. Now those union members are now gathering downstairs. They're quite frustrated and surprised and disappointed. This is what union representative Peter Mancusio had to say a little bit earlier. Just tip them in. Regular painkilling medication is now a daily routine for Michael Forbes. While duty as a dad still calls, his life is now almost unrecognisable to what it was. Come on, grabbing the gate for us. This was Michael Forbes at the height of his semi-professional career. Strong legs, a steely determination and a huge heart, which saw him hold his own against some of the best athletes in the country. He was an AFL umpire briefly at the highest level. One of footy's great rivalry, Steins jumped early and gave away the free kick. That life stopped on Beach Road in June 2008. I remember waking up at 3am and I tried to speak and couldn't speak because I had breathing and feeding apparatus uh, in me and I just mouthed the words, what happened? Foster CEO John Pelaire is there. For more, Tony Nichols joins us from outside Foster's headquarters based in Melbourne and Tony Nichols, as John Pelaire tells us, he fully expects it will continue to be based in Melbourne. Yeah, that's certainly the case after an exhaustive uh, four-month and 14-day negotiation process, which some have said has been hostile at different times. The board of the Fosters Management Group has accepted this $12 billion-plus takeover deal from the world's second biggest brewer in Saab Miller. Now, back in June, an offer of $4.90 a share was made, but the latest offer, last night's offer, was 13% better at $5.53. And as you mentioned there, a compelling offer in enticing offer which the board simply couldn't refuse. On the topic of potential job losses, of course Fosters is a huge employer here in Australia and they're the owner of the world's largest brewery in the southern hemisphere in Abbotsford, a brewery which has been running since 1854. John Pelaire did concede to me here on the footpath outside his office here that there would have to be some sort of job losses at the margins because the Fosters group will now be going from a listed company to a non-listed subsidiary of Saab Miller, but essentially most jobs are guaranteed. This is what John Pelaire's had to say on The Breakfast Show a little bit earlier. It's a style of accommodation holiday makers would expect, complete with bold colours and timber finishes. But the aims of the Winteringham Centre are much simpler, to protect the lifelong bonds built between parents and their disabled children. 82-year-old Sonia is now too old to care for her daughter, and without this dual-purpose home, they could end up separated.